Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 17th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just to start out, a quick update on the SANS data incident. Uh, there are now indicators of compromise that were published by the team investigating the incident. And you may want to take a look in your own environment for a similar attack, as it's very likely that this same attack did also reach other targets. And to me, at least, the lesson learned here is that it's a good idea to restrict and regularly review forwarder rules and also do the same for Outlook 365 add-ins. And in diaries this weekend, we have yet another example of a malware sample that was intentionally inflated in size in order to likely sneak it past anti-malware. A lot of anti-malware will just outright refuse to investigate files that large. In this particular case, the file was 130 megabytes in size. The actual malware was only 24 kilobytes. The additional data came from 54 GIFs and 75 megabytes of just null bytes. Jan, who analyzed uh, the sample that we received from a reader, also goes through a quick reverse analysis of this particular sample after the initial data was removed. Entrant Micro has an interesting report about a Mac malware that appears to be targeting developers. The malware adds itself to the Xcode project file and then it executes whenever the project is being compiled. So interestingly, it doesn't appear that this malware is spreading to any users of the compiled software. However, once it runs on the developer's machine, it will try to steal Safari cookies. It has actually two zero-day vulnerabilities that it's trying to exploit that include also the developer version of Safari. So again, specifically targeting developers. In addition to that, the malware will then also be able to take screenshots and siphon information from a number of communication software like Skype and Telegram. The way this malware spreads is that if a developer shares code, for example, via GitHub, the malicious project file, including the script that actually is being used for the malware, is then distributed to other developers. And Trend Micro did take a look at GitHub and found 380 different uh, exploited accounts that contain this code with the vast majority being assigned to developers in China and India. So yet another supply chain style attack here. And of course, once an attacker has a foothold on a developer system, they could also cause additional damage. There is a chance that, for example, the stealing of cookies could be used to then compromise, for example, accounts like GitHub or other source code repositories. And Friday may not have been your best day if you are running Citrix, in particular delivery servers and Citrix cloud connectors, and you also have Microsoft Defender installed on the same system. Microsoft, of course, quickly did release updated signatures, and that should probably fix the problem. If you were affected by this particular problem, the malware, the broker service, which actually affected here, was moved into quarantine as a result. And Citrix has a page to which I'll link in the show notes with workarounds how to recover from this problem. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.